So this would be a quick intro to rock middleware. Don't know which one I'm going to look at. <laughs> really this one. So you may have heard of rack. Rack is the lingua franca that Ruby applications use to talk to Ruby web servers. And by implementing this common API between Ruby apps and Ruby servers, they become interchangeable. So you can switch out your Rails app for Sinatra, no idea why you don't want to do that, and keep using the same Puma server, or you can switch out Puma for Unicorn while still using the same Rails app without having to re-implement the glue code to tell the app how to talk to the server for each possible combination. So to, to support as wide a range of app and server combinations as possible, the uh, Rack API is very straightforward. That's what we found out for hands to keep So a <laughs> Rack application, in our case this will be test app, needs to define a method named call that accepts this argument, a hash that represents a request, and this hash is typically assigned to the variable n. And in response to being called, we need to return a three element array. And the first element of this array is an integer that represents the HTTP status code. So in our case, we're returning 200 OK to represent how well we're talking. Uh, <laughs> let's see this. Help me tell you about rack. Okay. <laughs> the next, uh, and I'm not typing all that out. Uh, the next element of the array is a hash that represents the response header. So in this case, we're setting the content type header to text HTML, and the last object in our response represents a response body, and this needs to be an iterable object that yields strings. So we'll return strings of HTML. And there we go, we have a perfectly valid wrap, app wrap application. Now, it might not do much, it might respond the same to every request, because it doesn't really care about its argument, but that's a fully valid rack application. But how on earth do we serve it? So you may have noticed file name, Oh, yeah, you can see at the bottom, config ru. Um, so the file is a little unusual, and the reason for this is config ru is the default file that a rack server will look for to tell it how to run the application. And the ru extension stands for rack up. I'm guessing they didn't pick config rb, as that's probably a fairly common file name you might use in your app. Anyway, the server will load this file, which it expects uh, to tell it how to run the app. And the server defines a method named run that we need to pass an instance of our rack application. And from here, the server will take over and handle serializing, deserializing the request into a hash and passing it to our call method, and handle serializing our response array into a valid HTTP response for us. So, fingers crossed, when I start this thing with rack up and send in a curl request, oh, not that one. And send in a curl request. And this bit should complete itself or whatever. Then you can see we get back a string of HTML. And I'm not doing that for Alice, don't want to cheat you out. So, <laughs> <laughs> just like our demo rack app, uh, Rails is also a rack application. And you can see it has a config RU file here. Let's change the slide. And if we take a look in this config RU file, we can see, just like our file, there's a run method, which tells our server how to start and run our Rails app. In this case, run is being passed uh, whatever the result of calling Rails to application is. Now, given what we know about Rack so far, we know that calling Rails to application needs to return an object that responds to call, or so we hash its argument, and return the three element response array. Now, if you do a bit of source diving, which I'll save you the pain for, you can find the definition of call here inside Rails Engine. And you can see just like our call method in our demo app, it's being passed to hash, you take my word for that, or you can go check. Uh, it then does some request pre-processing, uh, uh, it's not important, but well, it is important but not for the talk. <laughs> passing the request off to whatever this uh, variable app is. And given the way app has been called and call has been passed the request, we can hazard a guess that it's probably some sort of rack application. So if we throw a debugger in here and, and start our Rails server and send in a curl request, this time it should do it, okay. 
then we can take a look at what app actually is. So if we look at apps class, we can see it's an instance of Rack Senpile. And you're probably thinking to yourself, that's cool and all, but <laughs> what on earth is Rack Senpile and what's it doing in the middle of our Rails call stack? So Rack Senpile is part of what's known as the Rails middleware, which you can see by running bin rake middleware, and this will give you a list, fingers crossed, of all the middleware you're currently using in this environment. And you see Rack Senpile here. So what the Rails middleware stack is, it's a Rails feature that lets us chain rack applications one after the other. And this chain of rack apps sits between the server and our Rails app. And they can do things like modify the request before it hits our Rails app. They can modify the response once it's left our Rails app, perform logging, etc. The middleware stack is <laughs> the middleware stack is a good place to put generic HTTP handling code that isn't specific to our application's business domain. So in the case of Rack Senpile, yeah, don't do that. In the case of Rack Senpile, what this does is it adds a header to the response if we're responding with a file, and that tells Nginx or whatever our reverse proxy is to pick up serving the rest of the file, as it'll be a lot more efficient at doing so than our Rails app <coughs> will be. Okay, so so the one bit I can never get right. So we're trying to understand. <laughs> 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 uh, it tastes way better in this. <laughs> so uh, we're trying to understand. Actually, these could be greasy beans. So we're tr trying to understand the new concept. I like to make a toy application that implements the basic ideas in a simple manner. But for some reason that bit I can't say. So that's what we'll do now. We'll build a some piece of rack middleware. And we will call our middleware just, yeah, rack. If I can type. If I'm not typing when I'm pair programming, <laughs> front of all you are. So we'll call our middleware rack app. And now to be included in the middleware stack, our piece of middleware needs to define an initializer. <laughs> One, two, three, four, yes, it's got four eyes. Needs to define an initializer that accepts this argument, not end, what am I doing? The next app in the middleware stack. And um, we'll just define that in this variable. And obviously, because it's a rack application, it needs to define a method named call that accepts this argument, the hash representing the request, and returns the pre element response array. I'm sure drill that into you all by now. <laughs> but to save typing all that out, what we'll do is we will proxy the request through to the next app in the middleware stack. And just for the time being, we can effectively insert ourselves at the top of the middleware stack by wrapping the call to rails.application in an instance of our rack app. And you can sort of think um, this is how conceptually the middleware stack is chaining your apps. So fingers crossed, if I just start Rails now to check I've typed everything correctly and send a request in, we still get some HTML back. Okay. However, this is too simple even for demonstration purposes. It just proxies all its requests straight through to the next app. So what we'll do is we'll implement a piece of benchmarking middleware using Ruby's built-in benchmarking library. <coughs> you need to remember, so it always catches me out, that this block returns nil. So we'll assign the response from calling the next app in the chain to an instance variable. Uh, that I cannot type. Okay, and then we will return the response for calling the next app in the chain after we've benchmarked it. So now when we start our Rails server and send in a curl request, we should, if I've done everything correctly, get back the same HTML as before, but this time with some totally useful benchmarking information. Okay, absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically it for a piece of wrap middleware. That's the bare bones it needs to implement. However, we can't really leave our code in this state. This is far too egregious of a hack, even for me. So what we should do is include our middleware in the Rails stack the Rails way. So first of all, we need to unwrap uh, rails.application, and then we will move rackapp into its own file, which we'll put in lib rackapp. One second. Oh, yeah. And now, hang on. Have I? Yeah. I'm in the right place. So now it's in lib rack app, we just need to jump into config application and tell Rails to include it in the middleware stack. 
And to do this, we just call uh, config dot middleware dot use and give it the class of the middleware to use. And Rails will handle instantiating our middleware, putting in the stack for us, and pass a request to it. Now, if it's important for you where in the stack your middleware goes, you can consult the docs for various methods instead of use to use. That's very tricky to say. And so you have some control of where in the stack it is. But if that's important to you with your middleware, it's probably the wrong call. So if I've done that correctly, we should be able to run bin rate middleware again and see our rack app here at the bottom of the middleware stack, right before the request passes through to our application's roots file. And that is it. That is basically it for rack middleware. Uh, all that's left to do now is to extract this into its own jam, put it on GitHub, and collect all the stars, <laughs> precious stars. So the takeaways from this, if any, will be that the rack middleware API is surprisingly simple. You might not directly interact with it every day. It's down there in the stack, but. Now you know the inputs and outputs a piece of wrap middleware is expected to have. Hopefully, hopefully you've got a jumping off point for any future source diving you fancy doing. Thank you. Cool.